Hi there folks, welcome back to this video 6 in this Python Pi Game series, making pups or flowy or water flowy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a simple little game put together in Python coding um, with me. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Um, just going to put it up on the screen quickly so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, we've got our starting piece, we've got our ending piece, and after a little while, the water animation moves through the pop. So in this video, we then need to... Um, put in the code so that the water continues along this line onto the next pop and that the water animation flows through there. Now there's quite a few things we need to do in order to get this right. We have the water animations for water flowing through from the left hand side of the pop down to the bottom. We also have animations for the water flowing from the bottom up to the left. It's not as simple as just reversing the order of the images because um, the images are not quite set up that way. All right. So in this code, as we go along, what we need to determine, as soon as this water in the starting piece has reached its end, it needs to determine what the next piece is, whether it's looking to the right, bottom, left, or up. It needs to determine if the piece, which direction it's flowing. And then if the, the, the pipe that is in the cell in the direction is the correct cell. And then if it is the correct cell, it then activates that cell or that pipe which then allows that pipe's water animation then to continue in that direction. It's quite a bit of code in this one. Um, let's go through it. I'll do my best to explain as we are moving along with each line, my thought process and things like that. Um, but that's the, gist, the, the, the general gist of it is we are getting the water now to move the animation to continue along the path. All right, and it does kind of continue, um, it does kind of work independently of the images themselves. So let's, well, anyway, let's work through the code itself and let's, 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 let's get cracking. <clears throat> right. What we want to look at is, let's go down to our start piece. Let's start off with the very first thing. In our starting piece, our starting pipe. Um, in our update method, that is basically where we are actually running the animations from. Uh, give me one second. Yes, we're in the right place. We're looking at the right stuff. Okay. In our update method, underneath, okay, so reset time of the time gets flowed. The, the image index gets increased until it reaches the end. Once it's reached the end, the starting piece is then inactivated, which means that the, the animations for the, the starting piece, there's no more animations to be played. The starting piece has therefore been played and it's no longer used. This is where we're going to start off with our code. The next we're going to do is we're going to insert underneath that self.active equals false. We're then going to create a dictionary. Current piece, right? And our current piece is going to be equal to, so I'm just going to open my, open my dictionary as such. So our current piece, which is basically our starting pop. So right now, what we're, we're basically creating a dictionary to say, okay, these are the different items associated with what kind of pop we have in our starting piece. So S right, so it's a starting right pop. So the, wa the water is flowing in the direction of the right hand side, um, right? So what we would then be checking is, is which row or column to the right of that pop which would then be self.row, self.col plus one. Okay, so that would be the, the square to the right of the starting pop. Then in that, I'm gonna include a list inside my dictionary um, for the S right key. Um, the dictionary is going to be my LR-RL pop, my left to right or right to left pop, um, my left to top, dash top to left pops, yes. And then my left bottom or bottom to left pops. Right. So bear with me if you'll understand what I've done there. So basically we're looking at, okay, if my starting pipe piece is a, a start to the right, the water flows to the right, so it will then refer to this dictionary. And this is the, the values that we will retrieve or that we will retrieve from the dictionary that we need to then process the cell to the next of it. All right. We are going to do that. For the same, if our, oh no, no, that list must end there, insert a comment. Then we're going to do the same with S left, no, S left, right, and 
and that would same it would be left to the left come on oh my goodness to the left we'd still be looking on the self on the same row but we would be looking at self dot col minus one right and then we'd be looking at basically the exact same it wouldn't be lr would it i think it would still be the same pipe fittings we're looking at yeah so we would still we would be looking at lr because that's the horizontal pipe However, here we'll be looking right top, top uh, right, and we would be looking at right bottom or bottom right. Okay. Uh, close the that list. Now we do the same for S up. Right. The movement would be the direction would be up. Uh, self dot row minus one, and self dot col plus one. No, it's not a column because it'd be in the same column. We're just looking directly upwards, right? And the list there would there before then be uh, top bottom or bottom top. That's the vertical pipe. Or um, LB dash BL. Left bottom or bottom left. That is because if from our starting position, our flow direction, water flow direction is moving up, which means the next cell, the water is coming in from the bottom upwards. Remember that. So don't get confused on that portion. Otherwise, you could have the, pipe, the water flowing in the wrong direction. All right. So if the water flowing is moving up, the the cell above the water is coming from the bottom. Okay. And then we're going to do the same as R B dash B R. Okay. And then the last one would be S down. Okay. And that's going to be down. Self dot row plus one. Self dot col. Uh, and then it's going to be a, again our vertical pop is TBBT. Yeah, we're going to be looking at LTTL, and then we're going to have RT dash, dash TR. Great. So that's our dictionary they're creating for our current piece. As mentioned, there's a dictionary or our current piece. So that's all the attributes that we will be using, all the values that we'll be using to determine which is the next um, pop, in which direction the pop the water will be flowing, to which direction and to which pop and how the next pop handles the, the flow of the anima of the water animations. Right. Now that we've done that, now just one thing to mention that we don't need to worry about um, self dot column minus one or self dot row minus one, and we are in the zero row. Remember when we when we generate our inserting start piece, when we generate the starting piece, we make sure that the starting piece is always in a valid position, which is next, never next to, or the water never flows into an invalid um, position, never flows off the board. So we don't need to worry about that, checking for the, uh, if the self dot column plus one is still a valid spot or not. Yeah, just needed to mention that quickly. Right. So once we've got our current piece dictionary, we're going to go with four pieces in our current pieces dot keys. So basically, we're just going to loop through each of our keys, each of these keys here. And we're sort of, so it's current piece dot keys. Okay. Then we're going to check, well, if self dot piece, meaning our start piece, is equal to our pieces. We don't need to make that pieces. Let's just... Make it a single singular, make it easier. If self dot piece is equal to piece, is equal to the piece uh, that we're leaping through, we're gonna go with self dot direction will be equal to current piece. Okay, uh, piece meaning that key uh, zero. So the very first item in this list. So if our starting piece is uh, starting to the right, S right, we then want to determine that the direction will then be equal to right. Okay, so self dot direction will then be right. The next thing we need to do is we're going to go with our row column. Okay, so we're now going to determine what is the row column of the next cell after we've already determined what our direction is. So which is the next cell we need to be looking at? We're going to go with current piece, uh, piece, that will be one in the list, which is this item here, self.row. And then self dot current piece piece two index. No, 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 no. We 
what you're doing now. Piece two. Okay, so there's our column. So now we're pulling out self.col plus one. Right, so we've just determined what our column and row and column position will be for the next piece in the in the direction of the water flow. Okay, then we need to check. Well, if self.game dot grid okay row column is in current piece piece and two which is the list okay so what we're checking now is where we're going to go so on the game grid itself uh, i'm just going to put a pass here quickly pass so on the game grid itself we're running the game it's now going to check well is this piece uh let's find around that one start piece of recognition current kind of piece yes 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 sure uh, that went way too quickly so i couldn't explain what was going on all right there's a first problem there as well we don't have a self there it's just current piece sorry about that so what it's doing is this let me just go run it again it'll run now we're in crash so it's now checking so we're looking to the left, right? S left. Why are you crashing? None too familiar. Okay. If self dot game look good, row column and current argument off type int is not iterable. Okay. Um self what int is not iterable. Piece two. Oh, oh of course. No, that that needs to be a three. Because we, we 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 need to be pulling from this list here. Okay. So if I run it again, last time it shouldn't crash. This should be it. So once it runs, uh, let's find there. So we've got the vertical. Okay, so now we didn't crash. Yay. So once the water flow is moved along, and it's now determining what our next cell is this vertical, which is, if you remember correctly, it's a top, bottom, bottom, top. Now it's going to be checking. Okay, well, if that, that cell, which is that vertical now, it's referring to that cell, is in the current piece three. So we had an S up. Uh, top, bottom, bottom, top. The piece was a top, bottom, bottom, top in the grid. So this check passes as true. Once this check passes as true, we're going to go, great. Well, what we want then to do is we're going to go self dot uh, game dot pieces. Right? We're now referring to the dictionary of all of our pieces on the game grid. And we're referring to the key self dot row. No, close brackets, square brackets, or a call dot, okay, we're going to have, include a calc, mm. flow direction. So now this is a method in the actual piece itself that we still need to go and create, okay? So if we call it, now if we run this now, it'll, it'll still just crash, so... So just test, let's just test this quickly. Let's just go ahead and go print self.game.grid uh, row call. Okay, let's run quickly. Let's see what it does. Uh, here we have our board. It's facing upwards. We need a top to bottom. So we should see a BTTB at the bottom here. There we go. TB, BT. It's done the check here and let's check what the next piece is within that. Uh, it's passed the, the it passed this test. It passed this if check, sorry. And it then, because it's a TBBT or TBBT because it's up, going upwards. All right. So that's just to show you how it works. Now we actually need to go into the, the actual pieces themselves and we need to make a couple of methods in there in order for the water animation flow to work in the piece itself. Because remember now, we're moving from the starting piece onto the next piece. And that means that we're done with the current piece. We're moving into the next piece and everything has to happen there in that, in that object. So I've got this line here that we've just put in, self.game.pieces, calc flow direction. And then I'm just gonna add one more below it so we don't have to come back later. We're gonna say self.game.pieces. Right, we're referring to the exact same piece via the key. And we want to set it active just to be set to true. 
So we want to make it the active piece. Okay, and then just below, we're just going to say return. We don't need to continue moving through all the pieces. We just say return. All right, so we're going to go down to our actual pieces now. Below the end pieces, these are actual pieces, our class piece. This is where we're going to set up the animations for the actual pipe itself. There's a couple of things we need to add in our initialization method underneath the self.ypos, but above the self.image, we're going to also include a self.image index, and that's going to be set to zero. Um, remember the water animation, uh, water animation images is a list of about 11 or 12 images. So we want to refer to the very first image in that list. Okay. Then we're going to go with self.rect, then below self.rect, we're going to include a self.timer, but we're going to set it to none for now. So as the piece gets put into the board, there's no timer actually happening with it. So every time you put a pipe in the board, nothing happens. It's just the image just appears on the screen. All right. Below the timer, we're going to say create an attribute self.active, and that is going to be set to false, because whenever we lay, put in the boards, they're false. If, whenever we put in the pipes, they are false. They're not active. They are inactive until the water is actually touching them, right? Just below that one, we're going to go with self.direction. And that is also going to equal none, because there's no direction for the water. We don't know which way in, direction, in which direction the water is flowing. All right. Just below that, another attribute we're going to include is self.anim image. So that's the water animation image. It's also going to be set to none. And then we're going to go with two more attributes, self dot start one is equal to true and self dot start two is equal to true. All right. Put them in there. They'll make sense in a moment. Okay. We're going to go down to our update method. Remember earlier when we created the pipes, we just created the update method and then we just put in pass. So now we're actually going to start including items. The very first thing we do the update method, we're going to say, well, if not, if not self.active, basically meaning if it, this pipe is still inactive, we're just going to break out of this update method and move on to the next uh, pipe in the board. Okay. But if it is set to self.active, the first thing we need to do is we need to then create, uh, we need to then do the self.timer.update. Uh, hang on a minute. I've skipped a line. Um, yes, I did skip a line. If you recall, up in the start piece, when we did the update, um, calculate the next direction of the next cell, the update method, here we created self.game.pieces. We created the method, or the, we called a method calc flow direction. That method was called within our, from our starting piece, right? So now we're going to go to our actual game piece and we're going to create the self calc flow direction because basically that tells the piece that we're in in which direction the water is flowing. So it's actually a pretty vital uh, method we need to create before we can continue. So we'll go down to our piece class um, just above our draw method. Just above the draw method, we're going to include a define calc flow direction. All right, and if you remember, we gave it a direction. We gave it an argument, self.direction, which was right, left, up, or down. Self.direction. So we need to give it a last direction. That is the argument we're passing it, right? So the last cell that the water was in, that's the last direction. Which direction was that water flowing in? We're going to create a dictionary to be able to deal with this scenario. Um, so let's go with cell direct. Right, cell direct for self cell direction. So the current cell's direction, we're going to go with um, open up a top here. So let's go with up BT. Sorry, up BT RT LT. Right, so that's the key. So if the last direction is in any of those, if the last direction is any of these, right, we're then going to refer to the following uh, lists. TB-BT, 
LB dash BL and RB dash BR. Yeah, that's the first list. We're actually working on a nested dictionary. Yes. So, yes, okay. So it's a nested dictionary, right? Okay, so that's our direction. Then we have a list, a, a nested list here. So the very first list, okay. And then the second part of this list will then be another dictionary. And that's going to be TB-BT. Right, which will then be BT, um, LB dash BL, which will then actually be BL, then right bottom or bottom right. The item we're actually looking for is bottom right. Bottom right. Okay, that seems very complicated and very confusing, but I'll explain it to you in a second. Okay. When we will, maybe it's best to just finish this method and come back to explain to you what this dictionary is, because we are calling certain elements from this dictionary. Um, so yeah. Let me just complete this little section of code for you. You pause the movie, pause the video, and then you can copy it across for yourself. Um, I'm going to copy and paste it so I don't waste too much of your time because this is fairly monotonous. Um, however, it is vital. Okay, we got down. We've got left. Oh, sorry, right. Okay, and then the last one is left one. Left. Okay. Let me go through this next bit of code so you understand what this dictionary is doing. I think that's the best way for me to explain it to you because it looks very complicated, but it's not if you just break it down. What we're about to do is we're going through this in this direction. So now we're going to cycle through each one of these keys. Okay. So we're going to go with for cell direction. Direction. Let's go with cell direct. Just to make it a little bit easier. Cell direct. So cell dire. Right. In cell direct dot keys. As I mentioned, we're now cycling through each one of these four tuples. Okay, so we're cycling through each one of those first things first. Then we're going to be saying, well, if last direction, okay, remember we're passing the last direction from the previous cell. So in our starting pipe, we then called it and we passed it what direction the water is flowing. So if the last direction is in cell direct. So if last direction is in one of these tuples, okay, and self.piece is in the cell direct cell dir list index zero. So now we're, what we're looking for here, let me just fix that quickly. So now what we're doing, so the first cell direct, so if the last direction is in this tuple, so whichever tuple is, so say the last direction was up. So now we're working with the very first dictionary item. And then we're going and saying, okay, well, our self.piece is in our cell direct, okay? Cell dir, so which key item is up is this one? Zero, which is the very first position of this nested list. So if that piece is then in this list here, so say so now the next piece was a TB or BT, it would then be this one, right? You got me? Okay, so we agree it is in there and everything's matching correctly. 
We're then going to say our change our self direction. Okay, will now be equal to cell direct cell dar. Okay, we're referring to this tuple still up this tuple. We're still referring to this part of the dictionary. Okay, one index one, which is the dictionary in the nested list, the dictionary item. Okay self.piece which is now so say now the, the next piece was a was a vertical top bottom bottom top so if it is that key item it then returns oh bottom top so our water animation flowing is working from bottom to top now you cannot go from our starting piece tell the next piece what water direction the what direction the water is flowing in um, you cannot just go okay next piece will be our because our starting piece is facing upwards, we kind of say, okay, well, the next piece will then just be bottom top, because the next piece could be a bottom to the left or bottom to the right. So you need this piece to determine which piece, which pop it is. And once you know which pop it is, then it can determine which direction the water needs to flow from. Uh, I know, it, this, this, this one had me stumped for quite a while, let me tell you, to get the water flowing animations out for it. Ah, oh, it'll be easy, just do it in the grid. And it was like, no. The water animation is the one that stumped me the longest. And uh, this, the way you're looking at this, this function was now, I've refactored this calc flow direction. I had it a bunch of if statements where I had, well, if the flow of the water was up or if it was in these items here, then it would do a check to see if it was one of these items. And then it would do a check to see if it was one of these items. And then only would it return the items. And there was a lot of if else statements where I've realized once I'd finished the code and finished the game, I realized I could refactor it and, and we could use a dictionary with nested lists within the dictionary to be able to refer to the particular items we needed should um, should the very first if um, the if check actually be successful. Let's put it that way. And we managed to drop down that code of like 16 lines down to just this few right here. Okay. So what we've done is we've basically set our current pipe We've determined in which direction the water should be flowing. Should it be flowing from the left to the right if it's a horizontal pump, or should it be flowing from the right to the left? Okay. Very vital little method that. The next thing we need to do is then we actually need to set up the timer for the pump itself. Timer, flow time. Okay. So now we've given the 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 pump the the object itself a self dot timer attribute. All right, now we're going to go back up to our initialization, our update method. My bigger apologies. Self my update method, self.timer.update, that basically means now the timer has been set, it's running. The update method for the timer is running now, is being called as well. So we're going to go, well, if self.timer, right, is active, if self.timer.active, so is equal to false, right? And self dot image index is less than the length of flow uh, self dot direction. Okay, minus one because the length of the list is not the same. Right. So if the self dot time active is equal to false. Right. And self.image index is still less than the length of the list of animated images, the water flow animation images. Right? We're then going to self.update image animation. And that's a very small helper function. All we're going to do is basically increase our image index number from zero to one. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go self.reset timer flow time okay so that's two methods we quickly need to create self dot reset timer and flow direction okay let's create let's up, let's create the update image animation firstly so underneath my calc flow direction we're going to define a new method we're going to define update image animation animation okay i'm not going to give it any arguments we don't need to I'm just going to say it changes the image to reflect the updated 
water flow animation, basically. Just whatever. So we're going to go, well, here's where we use the start one, start two. So if self.start one does not equal true, and self.start two is equal to true, self.anim index is equal to zero. Now, if I remember correctly, I wrote this. I was having a bit of difficulties. Um, your animation index, image index is starting at zero, right? The problem with that is, is the very first image in the self or water animation image list shows that the water flows already. So what would happen is as the water would flow through the pipe from one pipe to the next, as it would switch over, it would look like it would jump suddenly because you would be moving from um, a part that would just, just ended with the water flow and then the very next pipe would start with water already in it, which is an issue. So I, I, I try to work around this by using a self.start1, self.start2. So basically, um, the water animation hasn't occurred in the very first cycle. And then only it pulls in the next image of animation index image, the next image of the water flow. You don't need to do this. It doesn't make too much of a difference. It was just personal preference for me. I didn't like to see that little jump. It felt a little bit cheaty, if I could put it that way. And this is the only way I could kind of like off the fly figure out, try and make it work. I'd be very happy if you could come up with a better method. Um, put it down in the comments. That'd be great. Cool. Dot start two does not equal true. Okay. Self dot image image dot image index plus equals one. Okay. If not self dot start one or not self dot start two then self dot anim image is equal to the flow self dot direction self dot image index uh, oh there we go okay so that's my update image animation method okay where are we now? The next method we need to create was a reset timer. We're going to create that method just above my calculated flow direction. So we're going to define reset timer with duration. Okay. Um, small comment, we're just going to say resets the timer with a new timer. All right. Self.timer dot duration will be equal to duration self dot timer dot activate okay uh, if self dot start one self dot start one one is equal to false and then return if not self dot start one and self dot start two is equal to true self dot start two will then be set to false all right i'm just quickly gonna perform a run i don't expect it to work i'm just running this because we're not calling these things anyway as far as i'm aware uh, yeah, okay, but everything still seems to be working just fine. So let me go down to my, so let me just go to my, um, my update method again. All right, so we're handling the, the timer itself. Now we actually need to handle the increasing of the image, reflecting the image on the screen. So we're going to go with if self.image index is equal to the length of the flow self.direction minus one and self.active is equal to true right well then we're going to go self.calculate 
next piece direction. Okay, that calculates the next piece. So that's our update method that goes on to our calculate next piece direction. But that's still not reflecting our image on the screen. Um, before we go ahead, before we go ahead and create that method, let me just see why we're not including the image. That, why is our animation image not reflecting? Uh, of course, our image, our water flow animation is not reflecting on the screen because we're not calling or we're not drawing it to the screen. So we're going to go down to our draw method within the piece, and we're going to show um, inside the draw method. We're just going to say, well, if self dot anim image. Remember, if there is an animation image. Remember, we set it up that there was no animation image. Right, so the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to, we were drawing the image to the screen. If self dot anim image, okay, then we just want to draw it to the screen. Window dot blit self dot anim image, image self dot rect. Oh yes, what I was saying is remember when we did the initialization of our, of our piece, there was an animation image that was set to none. Okay, and then once it gets updated with an image, then we actually could give an image to that attribute. So now there will be an image. Let's see what happens. Uh, we have the right piece there. That's fantastic. So we should see a water flow going here. Ooh. It worked when something went wrong. Let's have a look at that again quickly. Uh, let's put that piece there. It's working. Okay, you couldn't see it on that one. Um, there's an issue with the animation or the image itself, I think. You'll see a bit of blue. Hang on. There. And then it crashes, obviously, because we don't have this method created just yet. Uh, I just want to see quickly what it was. I think it's got to do with the images themselves. All right. So the issue we're running into when we run the game is the way we load in our pops images is we're basically taking the pop and we're taking away the um, the opacity. We're making it opaque. So basically, you can no longer look through the pop because of the way we're loading in the pop images. And we thought we'd be clever and we would just use the load images uh, function that we created earlier on. Um, so that that's that's just not going to work anymore. It it can work this way. We can do this. Um, I think we could actually just manipulate that load images method function um, to bypass it as a sprite sheet. Let's do that and see what happens. Um, okay, we're doing this on the fly. So if we completely break this, uh, I apologize. Um, but yeah, let's try and fix this on the fly. Okay. So here's our load images function. So it's taking in a path, spreadsheet, all that stuff's fine. We're happy with all of these items. It then goes into creating an image list and then cycling through that sprite sheet. This is the section here that's causing a bit of an issue. I think I'm going to just bypass that little section right there. Um, so here in our method, our function load images, um, I'm just going to call this. Uh, Single, how do we spell? Uh, image, and we're going to give a default value of false. Sim SIMG is equal to false, right? Straightforward. We're just going to do that, and then inside our load images over here for call in range number image horizontals, we're going to go if SIMG is equal to true, right? We then want to uh, just do a straightforward image is equal to par game. Um, we've already loaded in the sprite sheet. It's just a simple image. So we're just going to say image is equal to sprite sheet. Okay, we've already loaded in the image itself. We're just going to say image is equal to sprite sheet. Nothing else. If else, it must just then do it like normal. Okay, then once we've got the image as a sprite sheet, then we want to do all those items with it. So let's go back down to our list. Okay, we 
because we put it through as a, a an argument with a default value, we don't need to go and add, add anything to all of these. We're just going to our pipes, um, image size. We then want to say SIMG equals true. I'm just going to copy paste that all the way down. And this could work, or this could have just been a complete waste of time. Let's have a look quickly. Uh, there, there, you see that my pop is uh, dear <laughs> Um It's transparent. That's the bloody word. Sorry, my Afrikaans is coming through. Transparent. <laughs> As you can see, now the pop is working. The water is flowing through, and we can see the water in the pop. I'm so glad we were able to fix that. See. We thought we were clever way back in the first video. We nearly set ourselves up here for a bit of doom and gloom, but uh, we managed to get it resolved. I think it just deserves a small. Okay. Now, as we were going through, we checked. Um, so just to recap that quickly, we went all the way back up to our load images function, where we were performing all these actions onto our images, that we'd, our sprite sheet that we'd loaded into, into the game. However, we didn't want to then manipulate that sprite, the, the image onto a new surface because we didn't need to. The image was an image on its own. So we then just put in an if check to just if the, if it is a single image that we've passed to this, it bypasses the whole putting it onto a new surface section. Okay, that's all we've done. And it seems to have fixed our problem. Okay, going back down to our piece. Um, where's our piece? Where's our piece? Class piece. All right. We then, in our update method, said, okay, well, the next thing we needed to do was then to create our update next piece. Calculate next piece direction. Okay. So calculating the next piece direction works very similarly to um, the way we did it for the starting piece. This video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to end the video here, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to just Give it a try yourself. See if you can come right. Um, as I mentioned, it is fairly similar to the previous um, for the starting piece. Um, give it a go. I will have it up for you in the next video. Cheers for now.